Okay, so um, our, we're going to move on to our next presentation now, uh, which is going to come from one of the uh, members of our India chapter. I, I welcomed them earlier on and mentioned how many of them are taking part this afternoon. I, I say this afternoon in Europe because for them, of course, it's already the evening. So thank you for taking the time uh, from your evenings to, to join us. Um, our speaker this afternoon uh, on the development of machine learning models for uh, using Python for flight test optimization is Wing Commander Sentil Kumar, who I guess we can see on the, the video right now. So uh, good evening to you, sir. Um, uh, Sentil is uh, in active service still in the uh, Indian Air Force, uh, having done a number of qualifications. I have to say your list of qualifications, sir, is very impressive between your, your Bachelor of Engineering, your Master of Technology, and also your training at the, uh, the Indian Air Force Test Pilot School, uh, where you graduated as a flight test engineer in 2011, I understand. And uh, following that, you've been lucky enough to fly on a number of aircraft types, which I think many of us on this conference won't get the chance to do because you've seen both Western and uh, Russian fleets of aircraft. So I guess you've seen a, a wide variety of very interesting things. So um, uh, Sentel has asked us to uh, play a uh, recording of his presentation, which he prepared earlier uh, in case of any uh, network issues. So if you can just give me a few moments, I will get that set up. Uh, we'll play the presentation and then he will be available at the end of that presentation to answer your questions. And once again, you can use the chat to do that. This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'll be delivering a talk on development of machine learning models for flight test optimization. I'll begin with uh, the motivation, bring out what aspects motivated me to take up this project, introduce the problem statement, explain innovative data generation methodology and development of machine learning models, bring out some use case scenarios and finally conclude with the way forward. So with a career spanning over uh, 10 years of uh, in flight testing, so I have uh, a varied experience in uh, undertaking prototype uh, aircraft testing, uh, training aircraft testing. So in all these, one common point is that uh, we have abundant data. Like in case of a prototype uh, aircraft, uh, uh, we have almost uh, 1000 plus stall test points, 600 plus uh, spin test points, which can be used to characterize the aircraft performance and handling qualities. Similarly, if you talk about uh, training aircraft data, so we fly almost 1500 plus hours per month and uh, which has got textbook instructor sorties and people sorties. So with this also we can use this data to characterize the, the training profile. Last but not the least, uh, I need not explain about how uh, abundant, I mean how uh, uh, data intensive is the flight test course. So um, in effect, what I can say is that uh, tremendous amount of data is available, which is waiting to be tapped. So now I would say that we are in a sweet spot, like where we have uh, abundant data, which is available on one hand. On the other hand, we have the ML technology, which is which has evolved uh, leaps and bounds, especially over the last decade. And these two, when you see uh, in the light of uh, the need for optimization, so we are in the sweet spot wherein we need to converge the, uh, the ML technology which is available with the kind of data analysis we do. So with this background, I set out to do a ML model which will do this intended application. So what the model should do is it should input the flight test data that is the whatever the normal CSV file or the Excel file becomes an uh, input for the ML model. So the uh, model what it does is it identifies the test points. So it identifies the test points automatically, analyze it and characterize it. The output which I expect the model to give is the report on the task which we carried out in air. It should give quantitative data for generating the PFRs. You all will agree that uh, writing PFRs is a cumbersome task for a test crew because 
you need to listen to the audio tapes you need to uh, look into tons and tons of data so here what i am looking at is a is a model which will aid the pilot or the flight test engineer to do a, a quantitative uh, pfr automatic analysis of test points and also i expect the model to suggest test point uh, uh, for uh, preparing ourselves for the subsequent so this is the project which uh, we set up on ourselves to develop so the aim is to develop a ml based application for proving the concept which is nothing but identification of test point the test point is pretty simple we set out to identify the stall and a loop and in effect analysis of that particular flight test data so this is test point wise so we will restrict the proof of concept to these two uh, uh, points that is identification of test points once we have proven this concept i will explain how this concept can be extended as a product all right now we will present use case scenarios and also the practical utility of how to extend the utilization of uh, machine learning for the other tasks which we do the final aim being we need to optimize the effort reduce the cost without uh, jeopardizing flight safety let's talk about the challenges uh, machine learning model it's a typical iceberg model where the data is what with what lies beneath the modeling and testing is just like the tip of the iceberg so the first step is there is a requirement of a humongous amount of data so the data which we need to have to develop any type of a machine learning model should be structured labeled and archived like even if i get say last 5 years of flight data which is not labeled or which is not structured which is uh, it is as good as being useless so this is the data i am looking out for the tools which i used for developing these machine learning model is python uh, used pandas numpy and scikit and uh, also used on google collab google collab is nothing but a cloud based uh, uh, application which is available over the internet and uh, orange data mining software which is uh, which is specifically made for data analysis so me being uh, from an active uh, military background uh, working on uh, internet cloud is is not preferable so so it is not conducive so the tools which are available presently are not conducive for military so we need to begin somewhere solution the solution is we used simulators for data generation digital combat simulator most of you would have come across this term which is uh, the buzzword in the uh, in, in aviation circles especially in the civil aviation circles and hobbyists and enthusiasts so dcs which is available which you anybody can download it can be set up at home so this is what uh, you are seeing this is set up in my home so i have a neat hmd with the latest graphics processors so it has got high fidelity aircraft models the most important thing is the data Uh, generated by dcs is akin to actual aircraft and it obeys the laws of physics and aerodynamics and that's the most important thing so data extraction we need to uh, we need to do a little bit of modifications like uh, data extraction happens in uh, lua software lua which is mit developed open source softwares so we have written exclusive codes for extracting the data from dcs the test aircraft is the l39 albratros of uh, Czechoslovakian origin the idea is to develop ml models however there are certain limitations of using the military data directly onto the tools which are available over the internet so we looked out for a via media the digital combat simulator acted as a perfect via media for us to achieve the end goal so to put things in perspective i will just play this video so that you can see how high fidelity Uh, data we can get and how representative the cockpit is uh, vis a vis an actual aircraft so this is for loop maneuver it is being undertaken the loop is being conducted at 4000 feet initiated at 3000 knots crossing second horizon 8000 feet nose down recovering recovered at 4000 feet 
So this is how this simulator is. Uh, so this anybody can uh, download it and we can use uh, to use as a perfect data generator. All right. The task is proving the concept. We took a task of simple identification of a stall test point. What I have shown here is the time history plot of uh, angle of attack. So I carried out almost 20 stalls in one particular uh, flight because this is towards the training. So I had to collect a lot of uh, archived and structured data towards which I did 20 stalls in one particular flight. So this red line marks the points where the angle of attack has exceeded 20 degree. So you all may ask that uh, what's the big deal? Why should we go for uh, ML? Because we can we can we can put a simple conditional statement. However, I'd like to remind that stall is not just straight and level 1G stall. So you got stall in a turn, we got stall in a loop, we got stall under high NZ condition, and we got power on stall. So it is not uh, humanly possible to arrive at perfect conditions which will segregate all this. So we need to knock the doors of machine learning. Now, if I ask any test crew to uh, identify stall, so they will typically plot these kind of you know time history plots against angle of attack, time history plots against altitude, IAS, and uh, NZ. However, now I will see what the machine sees. Like if I feed the data to the machine, uh, how the machine sees that? Okay. So we got almost 44 columns of data from uh, time, red alt, RPM, and each each column. So so what this heat map gives is how each and every column is affecting the other column. So, uh, what? How can I use this function of machine learning in in Python? Is I can extract the top features which correlate mostly with angle of attack. Now, if you see this, what uh, this diagram gives us is the pitch movement or the stick movement in the pitch channel is positively correlating with angle of attack. The elevator movement is positively correlating with angle of attack. Similarly, the right elevator and the left elevator and all the altitudes are positively correlating. Negative correlations are as good as positive correlations. So here we see that the indicator day speed, RPM and Vz are negatively correlating and there are certain neutrally correlating uh, features. So what I need to do is I need to take out these top features like I need to select top of five or six features as an input to my uh, machine learning model so that it predicts or classifies better. So these kind of uh, tools which are unique to these machine learning models which can be used for us to arrive what are the top five features we need to select for our machine learning model which is otherwise not possible in conventional methods. So once we have identified the features the next point is something called labeling. So what needs to be done is uh, I have chosen supervised learning which uh, in our opinion is that the best for uh, flight test data analysis and for general aviation applications. So what we do is like uh, this is a typical time history plot where the angle of attack increases and the moment it increases 25 degrees it goes up to 35 and thereafter the recovery starts. So this region between increasing 25 and decreasing to 25 is taken as the stall region. I have marked it, labeled it manually. So now we get two classes that is the stall condition and the rest of the points are non-stall condition. So this is what we are going to teach the uh, machine. So now you, you can see that in that sort of uh, 20 stalls, I have uh, labeled each and every stall point. So almost 20 labels is what we have got. But this leads to another problem called class imbalance. In this thing, you see that the non-stall test points, that is the, the points which is not classified as stall, is close to around 1,20,000 rows, whereas the stall test points are less than 5,000. So this is a typical class imbalance issue, which we need to address before we move on to the next stage of machine learning. So there are different uh, uh, methods of uh, uh, addressing this class imbalance, like you can undersample the majority or you can oversample the minority. There's something called synthet synthetic minority oversampling technique. So here I just did the undersampling of majority. As you can see, the class imbalance, that is the zeros and ones, the non-stall and the stall conditions has been equalized in this uh, data. So it's it's pretty detailed topic. I don't want to dwell too much into it, but uh, what, I, what I want to put across is, this class imbalance issue has been addressed before we move on to the next stage of machine learning.
we need to choose the algorithm so before we choose the algorithm what we need to do is we need to split the data into a training data set and a testing data set the ideal way of splitting is 70 percent you should reserve as training data set and maybe 20 to 30 percent should be reserved as the testing data set so there are different types of algorithms which are available like logistic regression decision trees random forest so we need to see which is the most suitable for our particular task in hand like for stall you may have to use a different uh, um, uh, algorithm whereas for if you have to identify a SPPO or a fugoid you may have to use a different algorithm so we need to see which algorithm fits our uh, task in a better way of course I'm not a mathematician or statistician so I did a practical thing of referring to similar civilian applications which are there like I refer to ECG classification uh, there was a task of classifying smartwatch accelerometer and gyro data to identify whether the person is sitting walking or running credit card stamp detection algorithm so studied each and every algorithm and finally uh, zeroed on to two algorithms that is the support vector machines and the random forest classifier so here on the screen is the support vector machine where uh, you can see I have plotted the vectors that is the indicated airspeed and uh, ang angle of attack which is again plotted against the pitch so this is a three dimensional uh, picture about how IAS angle of attack and pitch are related to each other the orange point is nothing but the non-stall region and the green point is nothing but the stall region and both are separated by the hyperplane ideally this hyperplane which separates the stall and non-stall should be perfect so however here you can see there is a little bit of a green streak which is coming out into the orange area as well so that means this kind of a classification is not perfect however it gives a very good idea about how the hyperplane separates the stall and non-stall condition when you use support vector machines so you can see here the green and the orange are separated by this hyperplane so having found out that the support vector machine is fine however it is not a perfect one we switched on to something called random forest clarifier it's a multiple decision tree based on the different features and uh, using the uh, label defined in the training data it categorizes whether it is stall or non-stall based on multiple uh, decision trees so after having done that we uh, used the random forest classification and thereafter uh, we arrived at something called a confusion matrix just to see how our uh, prediction model is predicting the stall labels the, the stall classification result is for you to see if you remember i had shown 20 stalls which were used for training and with that training model we we with that training data we made a ml model and that ML model was used to predict a label for a new test set data. So here is a time series plot of a, a totally new sortie which, uh, which the model has predicted. As you can see, wherever we have stalled, the blue color is the data label which sits perfectly over wherever we have done the stall conditions. Now that we have finished uh, um, uh, the, the stall, we move on to the next part that is called loop so the idea is take two simple classification tasks that is stall and loop and loop is uh, we perform series of loops uh, textbook loop maneuver is what we did trained the model using the uh, training data so you can see the training data each and every point that is the altitude is increasing and, and decreasing and coming back to the same point so each and every point has been manually marked uh, labeled as uh, loop test points so this is training data so likewise we did almost uh, uh, 40 loops and uh, trained the model and thereafter this uh, data is a new data set which is over which the model is applied and then we get the predicted label so you can see all the predicted labels here so this is a completely new data set uh, which the model takes as an input and uh, it predicts the the labels where all we have undertaken stall so as you can see the loop test points are perfectly identified by the machine learning model so after we have developed the model we ran it through series of validations like repeated stalls loops and we varied the altitude airspeed other conditions in fact we varied the aeroplanes 
the digital combat simulator has got uh, different modules like a10 uh, the tf51s and also uh, we did quite a bit of iterations and finally arrived at a robust ml model which successfully identified a stall and a loop so that's about it that's the concept demonstration so we have uh, so what this model does is it takes this data input which is nothing but a csv or an excel file processes that data and gives a neat graphs and the data points like the data analysis which we can use for our pfrs that is the post rate uh, analysis the concept demonstration you can see that um, all these are automatically um, all these uh, all these graphs and the the uh, report has been generated automatically by the model so there has been no manual intervention whatsoever you can see the the graph for angle of attack that is the stall one stall two and here is the automatic pfr for the flight which we carried out so it is neatly classified that we have done three number of stalls it is given what is the maximum angle of attack what is the height loss so not only this since it is a proof of concept we have restricted to this we can extend this further like we can analyze as per mil standards and other relevant specifications like far which will definitely help the test crew to plan the test points and also analyze uh, how the test points have been conducted so till now we have uh, i have explained about uh, how we have implemented a proof of concept now we go to the next stage that is concept to product all right so now uh, the product based applications which we have identified are prototype aircraft flight testing uh, system testing and also this can be used for many training scenarios so let me explain each and everything prototype so like uh, you generally we have level d simulators uh, which are used to uh, uh, train the pilots so those level d simulators can be used to develop the ml model so we need not go directly to the aircraft so we collect the data of level d so keep collecting the data and use that to train the model and thereafter once we have made the model we do a actual flight testing all right now compare the flight test results with the ml model and we keep iterating and validating the ml model so this way what we can do is we can optimize the effort and uh, this gives a very good opportunity for us to develop for prototype aircraft flight testing so once we have once we have modeled the prototype aircraft so we can again model closed loop flying qualities open loop flying qualities uh, open loop flying qualities like uh, short period pitch oscillations fugoid can be predicted classified and analyzed so this is how we can use for prototype flight testing another interesting thing is cooper harper rating like cooper harper rating is nothing but a supervised machine learning it's a perfect case for supervised machine learning where we have the data with us all right <clears throat> so three different sets of pilots flies the aircraft and they give their cooper harper rating so we collect that uh, cooper harper rating and we develop a ml model using this uh, data which is provided by the pilot but once we have developed that model that model can be used for predicting so this is again a very good tool which can be used uh, by the test crew so so that we we know what to look out for so that's about the prototype flight testing and uh, coming to flight test training so test pilot course and ab initio training alike so there are um, uh, textbook uh, training flights like the the ideal instructor sorties are there where the instructor demonstrates we take the data so that instructor ideal instructor data be becomes the training data for the ml model now with that ml model what we do is the student flight is taken as an input to the ml model so we arrive at something called express analysis of the test report so we generate quick look debrief reports for the instructor to see about how the student has performed whether uh, uh, he has got the tendency to get into pios or uh, whether he is progressing uh, as the course progresses so all these kind of things can, is possible with the help of uh, machine learning so machine learning definitely leads to cost saving like say for example uh, in, in whatever uh, use case scenarios i have discussed till now it aids the test crew with quantitative data it definitely saves time it predicts the results it predicts the deviations and of course in certain cases we can use it to give us solutions as well so in effect what we are doing is uh, we are making the machines responsible too like uh, safety safety is first in aviation and safety is everyone's responsibility with the help of machine learning we we are making computers and machines responsible to in the domain of flight safety 
whether we like it or not m uh, machine learning is going to come in a big way in in future and it is going to play a, a, a big role in decision making so we are expecting to have uh, intelligent systems like mission computers radar processors and I, as on date they are not intelligent systems but <laughs> this machine learning and ai will definitely make these systems as intelligent with that being the case flight testing must not be left behind so we need to catch up then that's about it that the take home points are uh, in this i would like to conclude that the major take home point is the methodology which which i have brought out that is you have got two types of uh, uh, developers one is the hobbyists and the enthusiasts the other one is professionals the hobbyist can take the route of the desktop simulator example like you can generate data using dcs so if you are a flight test engineer in your uh, private capacity you want to develop a machine learning model you can make use of desktop simulator on the other hand you are a serious uh, developer as part of a it's your organizational task you can definitely use the level d simulator to develop the ml models I would like to draw your attention towards the recent YouTube channel opened by SFT Seattle chapter. It is an online flight test academy which says that no previous experience is required for either the student or instructor and it tries to teach flight testing through video based instruction. The complete instructional sorties are being flown on a desktop simulator. If a flight test training can be given this way, I am sure we can also train ourselves on machine learning using the desktop simulators which are available off the shelf most important things which we have realized over this exercise which we have conducted over maybe past 3 4 months is we have understood the limitations of ml all right we have given a 360 degree approach like how a data has to be collected how a model has to be developed and the model has to be validated the issues has also been discussed all right the most important thing we have realized when this exercise is when not to use machine learning or ai or how to use a combination of a conditional statements with machine learning so this is a major issue which everyone has to understand where to apply machine learning so with that i have uh, concluded my talk application of machine learning uh, techniques for flight test data opt optimization i would be happy to take on questions if any Okay, well, I hope the technology worked. I could certainly see the video and hear the sound from my end. And, and I think from the comments that uh, other people could as well. Uh, that was a first for me. I, I've, I've never uh, listened to a pre-recorded presentation. So uh, thank you for taking the time to do that, Centre. That's, that's very good. Um, you may have seen in the chat um, uh, during your presentation, that's obviously one of the advantages of, of letting a recording play, that many of your colleagues have been asking questions about the, uh, the quality of the data which is coming from a simulator. And they wonder if the data is too perfect. In real life, there might be some, uh, some noise on the line, some interference, some dropouts. Uh, can you say a few words about how that might affect your, your model or your technique? Okay. So you're able to hear me now? Loud and clear. Okay. So uh, that's a very pertinent question. Um, whenever I talk about simulators, uh, it's a general assumption that it gives a perfect data. However, if I present all the data because of 25 minutes, I could not present it. I would say the fidelity, including the noise, it's, it's as good as um, uh, what we expect in an actual aeroplane. But having said that, this uh, methodology of using simulators for developing ml model is just to drive home a point that uh, there are many processes and many stages you have to cross to get to a perfect model so if you use an actual aeroplane probably you will end up uh, maybe like 20 sorties or 25 sorties to teach that because en route you will hit a lot of roadblocks and here even with this stall and loop i had to do uh, almost like uh, uh, 15 20 hours on my simulator and suddenly some issue may come up so i need to go and you know fly my simulator but finally that model is prepared now i am expecting only the data from the aeroplane like if i have to teach i cannot use this l39 data model on an actual aeroplane say a pilates or hawk it doesn't work that way but what this exercise has given me is a route to follow what to expect for what to feed what kind of features i need to select a stall is a stall irrespective of whether i do in a simulator or whether i do it in an actual aircraft so that way this has given me a, a, a road uh, what to look out for 
and with all these things if i go on to an actual aeroplane i'm sure we can cut down the development time by maybe like one fourth so even if i save half the effort i mean this kind of an approach is definitely good i mean uh, the idea of putting across this is also another fact that like the seattle chapter it has opened the training for anyone who is uh, from any other background like you may be an enthusiast you may be an ml enthusiast so if you want to get into this so we can use this desktop simulators of course the ideal way is once you do this then we progress to the actual aeroplanes Okay, very good. And, and seeing as you mentioned that uh, that link from the Seattle chapter, perhaps if you have a couple of moments uh, during this afternoon, you could uh, paste the link to that uh, YouTube channel in the chat so that other people right could uh, to get access to it. I think that would be an interesting thing for people to be able to go and see. Yeah, and it has got two subscribers, and hopefully the subscribers will increase in that channel. <laughs> well, if all of the uh, if all of the people who are on this call instantly go and subscribe, we are multiplying by several thousand percent their number of subscribers. So that would be good for their channel, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, some people have uh, taken the time to write in the chat their appreciation for your presentation, uh, and I add to to their words mine to thank you for taking the time uh, to prepare your presentation, but also to record it. Uh, I think it uh, it worked very well and got around some of the problems we sometimes have with internet connection. So uh, thank you again for your your presentation, and uh, I look forward to uh, to seeing you and your colleagues from the India chapter on on more of our events in the future. Yep. Thank you.